Hey friends, welcome to the page. As you can see, I am getting Betty Lou ready to go to homecoming. That's right. She is going to Dearborn, Michigan for the old car festival. And I'm really excited. Now, we're going to go through our manual right here. And if you own a Model A and don't own one of these, you need to get at least this book. I highly encourage you to get all three. But you need at least this book to maintain your vehicle. This should be in your vehicle when you're out on the road because it comes with me when I'm out on the road. And this is kind of like, uh, for lack of a better way of saying it, this is kind of like your Bible uh, for a Model A. And so highly encourage you to get this. Uh, we'll just uh, move it right up close for you friends who can see exactly what you need to get if you haven't gotten one yet. Now, I'm not going to bore you with all the details, but we're going to kind of walk around, crawl around, get underneath, do what we need to do, look for things that are loose. That's really important anytime you go on a, on a road trip or anytime you pull a car out. Uh, if you have it in storage for the winter time and you're taking it out on its first road trip, there's certain things that you need to be doing and crawling underneath that car and scooting underneath that car and giving things a shakedown. And so that's exactly what I'm getting ready to do. This is uh, about a 1,200 mile trip for me, round trip. And so uh, this is going to be the longest trip that I've taken this car on uh, as of yet. And so a little bit nervous, uh, but I believe I've done everything I can to make it roadworthy. And so we're going to double check everything. We're going to do some maintenance to it, repack the wheel bearings, lube it, change the oil. Uh, and uh, service what we need to service because uh, in about 36 hours from now we are heading to Dearborn, Michigan. So stay tuned. Welcome to the channel. Ken Smith with Ken Smith Gallery. Hey, remember, give us a like, give us a subscribe, and most of all, be blessed. So getting the car ready for Dearborn, um, Notice this. I've been hearing this noise for a little bit. And if you can see up close, you can see that the shock absorber arm is moving um, inside, uh, or this whole shaft, I should say for the shock absorber itself is moving. It's a lot of, a lot of free play, a lot of banging around there. Um, my guess is it's completely worn out. Um, I tried getting the uh, nut loose. That probably hasn't been serviced in decades. And it's not a safety issue, so I'm not worried about it. It's more of an annoying noise that I've, I've heard. And uh, I've slowly addressed all of the noises, got back here as I wanted to. Just rotate the tires, make sure everything is fine back here. And came, come to the realization that, well, the shock absorbers, one of two things I'll do. Uh, more than likely, I'm going to do the latter of the two. So for my purest friends, please don't hate me. Um, uh, don't be a keyboard warrior. I love you all, and I respect all of you guys who have point cars and authentic cars and whatnot. Uh, but I'm probably not going to go the route of having these rebuilt. Uh, uh, quite honestly... Um, for the cost factor, uh, I just uh, uh, don't uh, want to uh, to have them rebuilt. And so I'm probably going to go with a more modern shock absorber. There's a couple of manufacturers that are out there that uh, have some bolt-on replacements for some modern shocks. I'm going to do a little bit more investigating and some research I've been in a car that has Kent Davis uh, shock absorbers out of Texas and very pleased with the ride. The owner is very pleased with the ride. I like how they install with uh, minimal impact on the originality of the car as far as 
you know, drilling extra holes and those types of things. So probably going to lean towards that, but I still want to do a little bit more research. But obviously, that's toast. So uh, still got the other three to take a look at, but I got the rear tires off now. And while I'm there, notice I have jack stands and a jack. I can't say this enough times, but I'm going to say it here because I think it's worthy to mention. Uh, never, ever take a shortcut lifting your car and working underneath your car. Uh, jack stands are an absolute must. If you can do jack stands and a, and, and a jack underneath there to help support it, that's just an extra form of safety. Um, I know of two young men personally, who have lost their fathers because they took a shortcut here. And um, I mean no condemnation to them when I say this um, because it's just tragic. And uh, man, if you're underneath your car, don't ever take a shortcut. Do it right. Be safe. Stay alive. So more to come. Uh, just uh, Wanted to uh, show you what I've already found, um, and uh, thanks for watching so far. Back in May, you may recall that uh, uh, when I was attempting my first major road trip for the second time, I heard this huge banging noise, freaked me out, didn't know where it was coming from, and uh, as it turned out, it was something like this, although it was a lot, it was much more loose, and it was banging the shock rod, which was rattling up against the undercarriage, and I had no idea where it was coming from. Well, I had tightened this shock rod up as best I could the last time, stuck a cotter pin through it, and thought that that problem would be solved, but apparently um, I must have used a a fine grade um, international, I'll be polite here, international copper or international cotter pin. Well, that international cotter pin is now gone somewhere, but it's not where I put it. And obviously, that's come loose again. So, I will be tightening it up. And probably just go ahead and inserting another international cotter pin so that I can deal with it again down the road. That's kind of how I like doing things. Get to do it. That's the joy, I guess, of owning a Model A. Well, you get to fix things all the time. Drive it one day. Spend two days fixing your drive for one day. Not always, but... Uh, uh, this time I'm not freaked out. Uh, I just know what to look for. I haven't tried to loosen this up yet. We'll see if I can get it loose. Maybe add a little fluid. Maybe increase my performance, my shock absorber performance by a whole grand 25%. That's provided that that shock absorber even works. So, uh, so that's kind of where we're at on the left front. So... I'll get to work on that here shortly. So I'm at the right front wheel now. Put a little bit more light on the subject here. And uh, looking at a few things, um, I noticed uh, um, this shock rod was obviously, oop, there we go, this shock rod was a little better. Uh, it wasn't loose, uh, making a bunch of noise like a, I heard. Uh, the uh, shock rod on the uh, the right rear. So this is nice and tight, no movement there. I did try to loosen this, and I got about a sixteenth of a turn, and that's about as far as I was going to get. Um, you can see up by all that rust that's in there, it doesn't look like that has moved since um, probably uh, uh, since the car was built, who knows. But um, one thing I definitely did notice is the last time I adjusted brakes, apparently I forgot to uh, tighten up that jam nut. You can see 
that jam nut right there. Um, so definitely uh, one of the reasons why you, before you go on a long trip, um, you uh, want to make sure that things look good, all the cotter pins are in place. Um, I'm obviously going to give this a little bit of grease. Uh, you don't need to watch me grease it. Um, and uh, But again, never hurts to pull the wheels off. Take a quick look, make sure all your cotter pins are in place, and uh, make sure everything is kind of hunky-dory, and uh, there's no, no looseness. See over here, I'm kind of pushing on the on the drum just kind of making sure that we don't have any any slop in the wheel bearings which we don't um, and rotating rotating this it's not making any noise uh, everything appears to be pretty good there so uh, so anywho that's kind of the skinny there uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, fix this and continue on uh, with our safety check, uh, just make sure everything is in place. So, keep watching. Okay, so this is kind of a poor man's effective way of checking the time, uh, timing, duh. Try this again. This is a poor man's way of checking the alignment. So what I've done is I've taken the valve stems right here and I have them 90 degrees uh, at a 90 degree angle my treads are kind of notched and ironically they're lined up very even with the valve stem so what I'm doing is I'm measuring the inside of this point right here closest to the valve stem the inside of the point on the other side I'm going to take a measurement and from that measurement I will take the tire and rotate it 180 degrees or 160 degrees duh, 160 degrees and measure from the same spot on the other side and that should tell me roughly what my toe in or toe out is so hang tight hey friends well um, I went ahead and uh, lowered the car down check toe again and uh, by golly, it was about three-eighths of an inch toe down, way too much toe. Um, and so I went ahead and adjusted that um, and uh, got our uh, uh, 30, between a 32nd and a 16th inch toe, which is what the spec calls for. Now, the way I did it isn't necessarily per the manual. Again, I really want to emphasize, if you're in doubt, just follow the manual. This is what I did to my car, and it's my car, so... I'm not too concerned about that. I'm not telling you how to repair your car. Um, and I, again, I don't do how to repair videos. Uh, there's there's plenty out there uh, and your local clubs can support you as well. I just showed you a little shortcut of what I did. Paul Shin uh, uses a wonderful tool that you can pick up on Amazon for about 85, 90 bucks. Um, I've actually used a tow engage just like that and they work fine. Um, I've, used, uh, I've used sticks. Uh, I've used a uh, conduit uh, uh, where you can get a smaller piece of conduit inside a larger piece of conduit and kind of slide it and do all sorts of different things. That I just did the tape measure trick because if I was on the road and I saw something, that little tape measure could uh, save me some tires by the time I got home. So again, just a little trick that I, that I do. Uh, there's no need for me to show you how to lube the car. There's videos out there that do that. I got to lube the car. And then I got to change the oil and there's no need for me to show you how to do that because again, there's plenty of videos that are out there. So um, that kind of wraps it up for my uh, safety check. I made sure cotter pins are where they need to be. I made sure things are tight the way they need to be and adjusted the way they need to be. So um, I'm just about uh, 36 hours or so from uh, leaving the Dearborn and uh uh, hopefully the next video you see is me in Dearborn with the Model A, not on the back of a tow truck, or not heading home frustrated and disgusted because I didn't get there. Uh, so, uh, um, yeah, that's about it. So, remember, like, subscribe, super important to us, but more than anything else, be blessed. Have a wonderful day.